It may look at this person is actually doing well because everything is green here. But when you look at the monthly cash flow, you realize that the situation is not as good as it looks. This person is basically losing money every month, almost every month. He's got negative cash flow on the majority of the months and he's only saved, well, partially saved by these two outliers here where he's brought in some additional money for whatever reason. So just by um, clicking with the um, right clicking and clicking insert, and this will insert a new line um, above this one. Then there is something that happens to your liquidity if you decide to save part of your money. And when we talk about savings, we normally refer to two types of savings. The ones that are going to be immediately available to you should you need them, which I'm going to call liquid savings. And these are typically your emergency fund, for example, which by its nature has to be liquid and ready to be used, or illiquid or locked savings, which are typically things where you put your money in and it takes time to actually get it back, if at all you can get them back. Um, it could be an investment in a property. It could be a, a pension fund. In that case, you will see your money maybe in a few years. Or it could be a tax-free investment account. Now, in this case, I tend to consider the money that you put in, um, in a tax-free investment account as locked simply because you lose some of the benefits. For example, in the UK, the ISA account or in the States, the Roth uh, IRA are accounts where you can put your money in and in specific circumstances, you can actually get your money out, but you lose the important um, tax benefits. So I think you should consider them as locks. Once you put your money in, you need to wait. You can't take the money out immediately. So these two will have a different impact on your cash flow calculation, as we will see in a second. And then you have a section for expenses. Now, these are categories of expenses. The actual expenses for the month, you can track in a separate sheet, um, which is down here, for each and every single one of the months. So, um, for example, in this case, across these several categories, I'm going to go and calculate the total of my expenses. And then these total of expenses will be deducted from my income and my starting position and from what I've saved on... Um, in my uh, locked savings to calculate the net cash flow of the month, which is here. Once the net cash flow of the month is calculated, a closing position will be calculated. This is the money that you should have left across your bank accounts at the end of the month. Now, there could be, a, there could be reasons why this is slightly different from what you have in reality, which we're going to cover later on. The other thing that the file does for you, it will show you your monthly um, net cash flow, which corresponds to this line, in a very graphical way. So you can see immediately that this person has had lots of negative months and just a few positive months, which have been helped actually by some one-offs. We're going to review this later on. And then the second graph that shows the uh, closing position. So what do you have at the end of each and every single month in your back accounts. And as you can see, this person has everything green, which is a good starting point, I would say. But nonetheless, if you look across the year, he started at almost 11,000. And at the end of the month, sorry, at the end of the year, he ends up with just above 10K. So he's actually lost something during the year. The file also calculates your yearly totals for uh, your income, for, for your investments, and for your expenses. And in the case of your expenses, it will also calculate your monthly average. Um, the monthly average is actually quite useful because you can reference this across your expenses and spot, for example, months where you've spent more than your average. Now, in this case, the file actually has a formatting rule, which in this case, it's here, says flag expenses if they are 30% of average. Um, and for example, in the file, you can see that in these two months, this is uh, in, in a sort of a pinkish color because it's more than 30% above the average. You can change this if you want. You can make it 50%, in which case less things will be highlighted. Or you can make it lower. Maybe it's 10% and, and above that you want to flag, in which case 
many more of these numbers will become um, flagged. The other thing that the file does for you is to track across every category, like home, utilities, health, and whatever, the, the shape of your expenses. Are they flat? Are they growing in specific months? Are they decreasing? This is visual reference um, across the file that can tell you whether you're spending more and more or less and less during the months. Now, how much are you spending during the months? And how do we import the data? I know that out there, there are ways to import um, the information and data automatically, but I definitely recommend you actually do it manually. There is a huge benefit of doing it manually, which is that you actually get closer to the data and you realize as soon as you input the data, whether there is something to pay attention to or to worry about. When you import from your bank, from um, you know uh, data which is packaged by someone else, you tend to miss important bits of information. So how do you track your expenses? Well, you do it this way. Every month has a corresponding tab down here. And this is linked, by the way. So if you go to January, for example, up here, and you click, you'll be transported to this January page. And January and every other month um, there are very simple to fill in because the four bits of information that you need are your date, or you spend, what you spend money on, the category for this, which links to the categories that we saw in the summary, so home, utilities, health, and so on, and the amount. And um, once you insert your uh, data here, and I recommend you do it daily, so as a very good habit, um, every evening, go here and record your transactions, pick the categories, the the summary page will update accordingly. And by the way, if you need more or less of these categories, you can either remove some of the lines completely, for example, by right-clicking here and deleting the row, or you can rename them. Um, instead of car, you can use any other name. Maybe there are categories that you don't use. Um, or you can add more lines if you need a more granular um, if you need a more granular tracker, by simply right-clicking on one of the rows and inserting. If you do that, remember to drag the formulas as well. So if I want to create a new category here, which I'm gonna call uh, maybe books or something very specific, you then need to highlight the entire row till here, click on this little um, uh, square here and drag down. At this point, all the formulas will be propagated as well. And as soon as you start inserting something that has category books, it will show up on the file. Now, I'm gonna undo this because I don't need it. And I'm gonna go back to January. And uh, I'm gonna show you what happens if you insert a new line in your expense tracker. Let's say it's the 31st of the month. I've bought a book. I'm going to select a category for this, either by clicking on the drop-down list and choosing, I don't know, maybe products. Or I could simply go on this cell, start typing the first letters of my category, like products, for example, and pressing enter. And at that point, products has been selected. And then the amount here, maybe I spent 25 euros. At this point, your um, purchase for the books is already on the summary page. It's been, it's been picked up and it's already showing there. And the other thing that you can see, which is useful on this um, expense tracker page, is this graph. It shows the progression of your expenses against the average. And it will become more and more useful um, as the year progresses, because you can see whether your month is going um, as your standard month, or if you're spending more, or if you're spending less. For example, this month, and it's in green here, and I know I can see it's below my standard average, so I can feel a bit more relaxed um, about how I'm spending the money on this particular month. If it was the opposite situation, and I could see that my green line, how much I've spent uh, during this month, is actually above my average, I could then think about 
um, decreasing or maybe do something um, to just reshape my expenses. It's not always a, a symptom of a problem, of course. You may be spending more money because it's needed. But if you've just stumbled on this particular pattern for whatever reason, and you realize it, you can simply push off some of your next expenses, maybe to next month, and try and see whether you can go back to the standard um, uh, shape of your progression. The other thing which is useful are these two links. Uh, one here will bring you back to your summary page. And the other one is this, which will navigate through the months. So if I click Next here, I'm going to go to February. And again, February will show me in February as being above, uh, as being below average up to a point, And then there was a big spike. And if I don't remember what happened, I can look at what date this was. This is the 26th, as you can see. So I can go down to my list of expenses and look at the 26th. Now, there is a problem here, and I'm going to show you what that means. I don't see any big jumps in expenses. So what happened here? What happened was that I recorded some expenses at the end of the file, maybe because I forgot. I mean, it could be whatever reason. So when that is the case, my expenses are here. And this is the reason why there is a big jump. There is more than a thousand uh, euros um, that this person has spent on, on a specific trip. So if I want to reorder the list so that they are in the right order, I can go up here, click on this little triangle, which is the filter, and select Sort Ascending. When I do this, this is now correctly um, organized. And as you can see, the 26th now gives me the information that I would expect on the 26th. So this is a very useful graph because it shows me for example, if I was recording my expenses at the time and I realized at some point I'm way above my average, I could decide to maybe delay some of the next expenses or maybe I could decide not to spend money on whatever I was going to purchase next. This, by the way, is just random data that I've used to populate the file. Um, it, it's not representative of, of, of anything. It's just random. And as I was saying, you can use these links to navigate to the previous month, January, or to the next, next, and so on. So again, in, in April, for example, looking at this data, I could see that there is a, I can see that there is a spike here. It's around day 0.15, which means day 15. Let's see if there is something here that explains it. Yeah, health insurance success, category insurance, almost 900 euros. Again, as I said, this is random data, but it shows you that after a few months, when you go back and you don't remember what happened to you, you can go back to your tracker and spot these, um, these problems, which will help you maybe even budget for next year. Let's go back to the summary, because <clears throat> there are another couple of things that I want to show you. Um, so I've got all of my categories here. Um, and I've got my monthly net cash flow. What happens at this point is that my net cash flow, which is calculated here, is also displayed as a graph down here. And this makes it much easier to actually see what's going on with your cash flow. Ideally, you want this cash flow to be all green, to be positive, so that every month you're basically saving money. In this case, in this example, and again, I said, um, as I said, this is random data, but if this was real data, you would see that this person was basically losing money every single month, except for a couple of outliers that bring the numbers up. And if you look um, in the same column, you would see that this person has had um, a regular salary of 4,000 a month, uh, some dividends, uh, 450 a month, and Here's the outlier, other income for 5K. Um, this may be a bonus at work, for example. And on this particular month, which is again positive, there was a one-off of 4,500. Maybe this is, I mean, he sold this car or whatever. It's a one-off and it's important to recognize that whether this is something that will happen next year as well or not, because this will really inform um, 
this will really make you think whether your situation is a positive situation where things are going up and everything is progressing nice and smoothly, or whether there is a problem that you need to address. Now, looking at this and imagining what this person has done, maybe, you know, a sale of a car can be repeated every year, this situation doesn't look particularly good. He started with almost 11,000 and he's ending the year at a little above 10K. So he's lost, let's say, uh, 1K over the year. And if you think about it, it's been working very hard for an entire year, bringing this amount of money home, which is not bad. And at the end of the year, he's got less than, than uh, what he started with. So definitely there are adjustments that he needs to make. So this is it. It's a very simple Excel file. The only thing you need to do is to go into the tab for the specific month, spend one minute a day, no more than that, tracking your expenses. Just four bits of information, day, description, category, and amount. Nothing more than that, don't make it complicated. The Excel file will do the rest for you. And the only thing you need to do is to look at the charts and determine whether your cash flow looks positive, which is good, or negative, which probably means you need to change something, or at least, they need to investigate what's going on. Um, if you've never tracked your expenses, if you've never looked at your cash flow, this is going to be transformational for you because you will get lots of ideas, you will see patterns, and it will transform your ability to save money. Remember to download the free template. Um, check the description below for the instructions. And for now, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.